All right guys, welcome back to another exercise tutorial. This time we're going over your traditional hack squat. The reason why I didn't do this hack squat is because not many people have this hack squat. Most people do have a at-home hack squat machine or at their gym, and we really gotta get into this so you can really see how to do hack squat. So I'm gonna bring you guys through how I set up what I'm feeling, basically my checklist, all the things that I'm thinking about when I'm performing hack squat. Now, each hack squat is going to be different depending on the angle. This is a home gym combo hack squat and leg press. So it's not your best, but it will do. But what I'm going to teach and, and what I'm going to coach and teach today, it can be applied in all hack squat machines. So first things first, depending on the plate, you're going to have to move it up or down. Now I moved it down because I was bottoming out way too early. Now what's going to happen from that is obviously going to give you a little bit more distance to travel for height and whatnot, right? Or dorsal flexion. So when these plates are like this, the higher the plate is up, the more, think about like right now my foot's doing this, and then if I went like and did this, that's basically what the plate is doing. Right now I'm in a, because of the angle, I'm almost plantar flex. Dorsiflex, plantar flex. When it comes to people's mobility doing squats, it's how good is their dorsal flexion or ankle mobility when they're squatting. So when we get that knee over toe, it's basically how far can this knee shift over without the heel coming off the ground, and hence that's why I have squat shoes. Now, we got that out of the way. Obviously right now there's gonna be more traveling for me to go for my knees to go over toe because of the plate. Now you can adjust it as you want, but for me I'm keeping here because I keep bonding them out. Now when we're doing this, it's going to be one of those feel things. If it's the first time you're, being, you're on a machine, you're going to have to adjust yourself on the plate so you can get down successfully without feeling like your knees are in jeopardy just blowing out, which they're not, but you know what I'm saying. If I get back and I just sit down and my feet are back like this and I just go down, I'm gonna, there's not much for me to go, obviously. So I'm going to play around with my foot positioning. I'm going to do a couple reps. And the goal for me is to see where my knees can go over toe with being comfortable my back being neutral and just being able to flow freely on the way down. So I'm going down and I'm starting to feel the back of my heels coming up. So I can tell from here that I should probably move my feet up a little bit. So there you go. And I'm just going to go down and perfect, right? I'm bodying them out. Regardless, I'm in a good position here. Now, one of the things I'm thinking about right away is as soon as I step into this machine, and before it's even unracked, I'm grounding myself. I'm looking at my feet to make sure that they are even on both sides. It might sound very basic, but you know how many times I coach people and they're like this. I swear to God, you get this. You might get this. You might get this. You might, you might get this. You could get even a little bit of this. It's off. So we want to make sure before we even start, your foundation is level or balanced. So I'm gonna do my best to look for little landmarks on my plate where I can see, okay, from here to here, I look very balanced. Now in the middle of my crotch, the rain between my legs, that's gonna be 12 o'clock. I'm gonna have my feet at a little bit of a one o'clock and an 11 o'clock angle. That's gonna give me a good position so I can externally rotate my hips. Now what does that mean? External rotation is basically twerking, sort of. Slash working, but if you want to know how to twerk, is literally learn to do this and you can twerk. Anyway, <laughs> oh my god. So right here, again, we're gonna do that. We're gonna do that little bit of that little game. We're gonna pretend that we're ripping a piece of paper open with our feet. So that action is gonna create this movement, external rotation. And what I want to do is I'm allowing my external rotation of my hips to align my knees with my toes. That's all we're doing. We don't want to continue to rotating so our feet start to pull out like this. Now, all we're doing is we're aligning our knees with our toes. So we're going to externally rotate the hips so the knees are aligned with the toes and we stop right there. Now we have our position here. We can adjust ourselves and get ourselves into our position here with our pads on our shoulders. Now, a couple things. I want to make sure that when I'm on this, you can see where the back pad is. 
I don't want this massive arch like this. This isn't what we're here for. We want this plate here or back pad to have our back flush on. Now what happens when I do that? We'll check it out. Watch out guys. I'm joking. This is what you see what's happening here. If I have a arch in my back, if I engage my core, engage meaning tighten my core, see what flattens my back out? I want my back to be nice and firm and flat on this back pad, right? While I'm here, I can take my hands, depends if you have like little handles out here or not. I wanna be in a position where it looks like or I'm feeling like I'm doing a goblet squat. I'm gonna have my hands in like this. Why? Doing this makes you feel like I'm pulling myself down while I'm doing it. So I wanna be inside here, which is gonna help me have a better neutral spine because I'm basically in a, almost like a goblet squat or even a front squat, and that's gonna help aid this, my core to be nice and strong from here or my brace. Now again, my core being engaged, I want my butt to go down the same direction as this, as the sled, it's going down, whoops. It's going down, so I want my spine to follow down. I don't want my butt to be like this and be doing this on the way down. You're just gonna have back issues, right? And we're not trying to make our back work. We wanna let the legs work. We wanna create a good amount of hip and knee flexion. So we wanna have this butt here, right? Our core is engaged. For those who might have crazy lower lordosis like I do, now our back is in a better position. It's engaged. So from here, I'm inside the handles, right? I'm, my core is engaged, my back's flat on this back plate. My feet externally rotated the hips from the ground, from floor to core, my feet are about 11 o'clock, one o'clock, externally rotated from the hips so my knees are aligned with my toes. My core is engaged. My elbows are in underneath my hands, I'm basically like this. And I take a deep breath in. Brace and then I let this travel while my knees stay over my toe on the way down Keep my chest up and here now. I've bottomed out regardless. I am still engaged and from here. I'm pushing straight back up And then down again keep my back on now. I am thinking about this entire time I'm thinking about my butt going down the same way that this plates going and my knees going over my toes That's how this is going down Right, nothing else. I'm not having my butt like this and I'm here pulling like this and all these things that are going against what I'm trying to do because this is what I see all the time and I'm like, ah, and the back's flared out. We don't want that. We want to be here, Florida core. We're engaged right from the ground, right from the ground all the way up. You see my quads are semi flex because I'm keeping myself up, I'm still engaged. My arms are underneath here, underneath the pads. My chest is up, my core is engaged. I let the sled go down by my knees going forward over my toes, controlling the weight down, stretch, and driving back up and going back down. Stretch and driving back up. You don't need a fancy machine. Most hack squat machines do the exact same thing. The biggest difference you might see is the angle of the hack squat being more vertical or horizontal depending but you're doing the same shit. So you can apply this the same way on any hack squat machine. Remember, I'm coaching in a way where I have no ACL. I have shoulder issues. I have lower back issues. I have hip issues. The only way for me to be able to do these machines is if I do them where my body is in complete alignment so I can properly move through the full range of motion. So take these cues with you the next time you do hack squats. Let me know what goes in the comment section below. And until next time, you know how it is. Iron Jabba's Iron, progressive overload your life. In the meantime, keep Jim chasing. Peace.